Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I believe that you should have three sort of handouts today. Um, one is called the Liturgy of the Palms, which is the one we begin with. The second one is just says Palm Sunday. And the other is a list of announcements for upcoming of this week, special notices, and the Easter, excuse me, the Holy Week and Easter service schedule. So I'm not going to go over those because you have it in front of you. There is one omission that I do need to cover, though, and it will be in future announcements. And that is on Tuesday, the 23rd of April, there's going to be a work day here at the church to work specifically on the gutters as far as cleaning and repair and the like. Uh, Lewis and, um, and Gary are heading that up. It's at 8.30 on Tuesday, uh, the, April, the 23rd of April, and there's a backup day the, the following Thursday on the 25th in case it's raining. But we'll send out notices of that, but I want to go ahead and get that uh, on your minds and available for you. This service is very different. It's one of the most unique services that we have on the course of the calendar year. It actually begins generally outside the church. It's a little breezy, a little cold. So it's a procession for everybody, not just me, not just the choir, but everyone. You're invited, encouraged, but you don't have to. Some people have uh, problems with walking and so forth. I understand that. So if you are able and willing, I'm going to invite you to gather at the entrance of the church on the inside for the Liturgy of the Palms, which is how this service begins. And I will guide you through that, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole service today, because again, there are different changes. You'll notice that it begins on page 554, for instance, but you don't need to turn there, because everything you need is in the Liturgy of the Palms, including the processional hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. So everything you have is in that handout called the uh, procession of the liturgy of the palms and so take this time now and gather those who are able and willing gather at the entrance of the church for us to process in thank you Does everyone have a palm that would like one? If not, they are available right over here uh, next to uh, Cheryl. Okay, no, just hand them out if anybody needs one. We begin our Palm, Survey, Sir, palm Sunday service with the Liturgy of the Palms on that titled page beginning on page one with the introduction. Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Dear brothers and sisters, from the beginning of Lent until now, we have been preparing our hearts by repentance and self-sacrifice. Today, with the whole church, we herald the beginning of the celebration of the Paschal Mystery. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem and was welcomed as King with palms and shouts of praise. Today, we greet him as our King, though we know his crown was a crown of thorns and his throne a cross. Therefore, I invite you to follow our Lord this Holy Week. 
from this triumphal entry through his suffering and death to the glory of his resurrection. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was hailed as king by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Sanctify these branches with your blessing. We humbly pray that they may be for us signs of his victory. Grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In the name Christ. Amen. Almighty God, whose dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oh, 
creation in chorus may repeat all glory lord and honor to the redeemer king to whom the lips of children make sweet hosannas ring the people of the hills with palms before them went our praise and prayers and anthems before thee we present all glory lord and honor to the redeemer king to whom the lips of children make sweet hosannas ring to thee before the passion they sang their hymns of praise to thee now high exalted our melody we raise all glory lord and honor to the redeemer king to whom the lips of children make sweet hosannas ring thou didst accept their praises accept the prayers we bring oh in our good delight us thou good and gracious king all glory lord and honor to the redeemer king to whom the lips of children make sweet hosannas ring the lord be with you let us pray almighty and everlasting god in your tender love for us you sent your your son our savior jesus christ to take upon himself our nature and to suffer death upon the cross giving us the example of his great humility mercifully grant that we who walk in the way of his suffering and come to sh walk in the way of his great humility may mercifully grant that we walk in the way of his suffering and come to share in his resurrection through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you in the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen we may be seated for the lessons Our first lesson is a reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 13 through chapter 53, verse 12, found on the first page of your handout. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So he sprinkled many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told to them, they see. And that which they have not heard, they understand. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of the dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as from one whom men hid their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, 
yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, and yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be recounted righteous. And he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the, trans was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and makes intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Be God. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 22, verses 1 through 21. The psalm will be said responsively by whole verse, and it is found on page 2 of your handout. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me, and are so far from my cry, and from the words of my complaint? But you remain holy, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our fathers hoped in you, they trusted in you, and you delivered them. They called upon you and were delivered. They put their trust in you and were not confounded. But as for me, I were no man, scorned by all, and outcast of the people. All those who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and shake their heads, saying, He trusted in God that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him if he will have him. But you are he that took me out of my mother's wound. You were my hope, and when I was yet upon my mother's breast. I have been cast upon you ever since I was born. You are my God, even from my mother's womb. I go not far from me. For trouble is near at hand, and there is none to help me. Many oxen have come around me. Fat holes of the shaft close me in on every side. They gape at me with their mouths like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart also in the midst of my body is like melting wax. Let the my strength is dried up like a pot shared and my tongue cleaves to my gums, and you bring me into the dust of death. For many dogs have come about me, and the counsel of the wicked lay siege against me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stand staring and looking upon me. They part my garments among them, and cast lots for my clothing. But be not far from me, O Lord, you are my succor. Hasten to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, and my life from the power of the Save me from the lion's mouth, and my soul in misery among the horns of wild oxen. Our epistle reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, found on, found on page 4 of your insert. 
Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And after being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. You may remain seated until we get to that point where it is announced that Jesus is a, goes to Golgotha. At that point, I'll invite you to stand. And at his death, I'll invite you to kneel as you are able. The customary responses to the gospel reading are not said today. They are omitted. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to to St. Mark. And they went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little further, Jesus fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, Jesus went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And Jesus came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs, and the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, the one I will kiss is the man, seize him, and lead him away under guard. And they came and went up to Jesus at once, and he said, Rabbi, and kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, and they seized him. But he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. And they led Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priest and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. 
And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even about this their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is this that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witness do we need? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she, took it, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, Peter denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. And he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. And as soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and the scribes of the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, and You have said so. And the chief priest accused him of many things, and Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast he used to release, release for one of them a prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man named Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them, saying, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? He perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priest had delivered him up. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. Pilate again said to them, Then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole battalion. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him, and they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And when they, when they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloth and put his own clothes on him, and they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. Please stand if you're able. And they offered Jesus wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. 
And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against Jesus read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priest and the scribes mocked Jesus one to another, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Samoth Sabbathini, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he's calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. I invite you to kneel for a time of silent contemplation. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the younger, and Joseph and Salome. And when he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should have already died. And summoning summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph brought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped Jesus in the linen shroud, and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. Continuing on page 112, 
continuing on page 112 of your Book of Common Prayer. All who truly and earnestly repent of your sins and seek to love and to live in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker and judge of us all, we acknowledge and lament our many sins and offenses which we have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your righteous anger against us. We are deeply sorry for these our transgressions. The burden of them is more than we can bear. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may evermore serve and please you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Please be seated. I want to share just some thoughts with you on this Palm Sunday about the significance of the death of Jesus Christ. I'll reserve comments for his resurrection for next week. But it is very, very important, probably the most important historical event that has ever occurred since the creation of humanity back in the Garden of Eden. That's how significant the events are that we're talking about today. You've got several passages in front of you. Please do not recycle. Do not leave your list lessons with us today. Keep them and read over them when you get home, today, tomorrow, Tuesday. Think about the words that we have. We have the prophecy from Isaiah, talking about the one who bears our sins and our iniquities, the one who does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We have the recitation of the psalm, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus was not having a panic attack on the cross. He was quoting Psalm 122 in its entirety by simply introducing it. The same way that we might begin the Lord's Prayer by me saying, Our Father, and then you all join in to the conclusion. When Jesus says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He is introducing Psalm 122 to be contemplated by all of us. For it is by his wounds we are saved. It is because of the love of God that you and I have joy and celebration. And we see from the Passion, the reading today from Palm Sunday Liturgy all the way to the Passion, the extent of that love. Jesus is acknowledged very quickly, as people tend to do. He's the Messiah. Let's call him the King of the Jews. Let's worship him. And as soon as there's any indication that he has failed them, they turn on him 
so quickly. It is our human nature to do the same thing. I did not have you intentionally say, crucify him, crucify him, as we often do. Because one of the things that can happen in our liturgies is they can become so standard, so rote, that they lose the power and strength of their meaning. Jesus died for your sins and mine and for the sins of the whole world. The question, is it in vain? Is he truly forsaken by God as his enemies contemplated? Or is there something great and miraculous and extreme that's going on? And you know the answer, there is. But the challenge for us this week is to walk the way of the cross so that we can identify with the very depths of our sinfulness and how far God, through his Son, is willing to go into the sewer of life to pull you and I out and breathe into us everlasting life. But it is not till we contemplate that that we can truly appreciate next Sunday. And so I invite you to take this Holy Week very seriously because it is the most important week of all weeks in the Christian year. We have services this week. Not everyone can attend, but I invite you, if you can, starting on Wednesday, come to the last of the Lenten lunches where we'll talk about the calling of God on us, and we will celebrate with the Eucharist. Come on Thursday, where three things are commemorated. Three things are commemorated on Maundy Thursday. The word Maundy is command, and therefore the first thing to remember is the command of Jesus to love as he loves us. To serve rather than be served. But he also gives us the Eucharistic feast. And in order for that to be accomplished, he gives us the priesthood. Taking unworthy people like myself and ordaining us and saying, Thou art a sinner, but with those sins I forgive you and I call you to lead the people in this Eucharistic feast. And so the color from Maundy Thursday is white because it's that, that image of purity that Jesus offers himself. But how does it end? Him stripped and taken away. And the tomb closed. And on Good Friday which is the horrible Friday, except for Sunday. On Good Friday, we will celebrate those liturgies also at noon and six. And on Holy Saturday, you will spend more time in your car than we will together. What a waste of time. Except, is it? Is it a waste of time to visit a loved one at the grave? The Holy Saturday liturgy is an opportunity for us, the disciples of Jesus, the followers of Jesus, to lay ourselves figuratively at his grave and contemplate and meditate the silence so that the great joy of the following day will break that silence and break the chains and the bondage that Satan wants to hold you and humanity in. But Christ Jesus is stronger and bigger and greater. Now that's pretty deep, right? So now, thanks to Walter, I'm going to invite you to pass the peace. But we're going to have a special way to pass the peace today. Karen, come here. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Oh, with them pop. It's Palm Sunday, guys. Stand up and pass the peace. Come on now. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace. Our offertory hymn is hymn 474. 
And the offertory anthem is hymn 474, and our invitation is offering to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and pay your vows unto the Most High. Eucharist will continue on page 115 of your Book of Common Prayer. Please remain standing, page 115. And this Holy Eucharist is offered to the glory of God and thanksgiving for the sacrifice and love of God by his Son, Jesus Christ, for our eternal lives. It is offered also for the prayers of the people, that you may remember those that are on your mind and heart, and also the repose of uh, Jack Shep Jordan. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty, and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, 
He became the author of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord God, the power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to kneel as you are able. All praise and glory is yours, O God, our Heavenly Father. For in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted, and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue, a perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. So now, O merciful Father, in your great goodness, we ask you to bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of your dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, your humble servants, celebrate and make here before your divine majesty with these holy gifts, the memorial your Son commanded us to make, remembering his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and his promise to come again. We earnestly desire your fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, asking you to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here... We offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. We humbly pray that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our many sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we ask you to accept this duty and service we owe, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, 
our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. For Holy Communion, all are invited and encouraged who are baptized Christians to come forward and receive Holy Communion after the choir. And we begin on my right side, your left. If alternatively you would like to come up and just receive a blessing, simply come forward, put your arms over your chest as such, and that will indicate to me that you would like a blessing. And of course, we offer communion through intention. Just simply hold out your palm and point to it, and that will indicate to me to intent the bread and the wine and then distribute it to you. Alternatively, you may receive directly from the chalice. That will be Gary. And just simply, you keep the, the communion wafer in your palm, then receive it yourself and take the chalice from Gary. And we'll be glad to bring communion to anybody in the, uh, in the congregation who's unable to come forward.
I invite you to turn to page 121 of your Book of Common Prayer, page 121 as we pray together the post-communion prayer. Together, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us through the sacrament of your favor and goodness towards us, that we are true members of the mystical body of your Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of your everlasting kingdom. And we humbly ask you, Heavenly Father, to assist us with your grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all the good works that you have prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I invite you to pray with me the Anima Christi, 
is found on page 674. Page 674, a prayer for union with Christ. 674, the Anima Christi. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from thee. From the wicked foe, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you all next door for hospitality and fellowship and remind you next week we're having the Easter service together with potluck celebration. There's a sign-up sheet downstairs for anything you would like to bring. And in any event, bring or not bring, everyone's invited for that fellowship after the Easter service next week. Our closing hymn is hymn 156. 156. <laughs> and a cry. My humble beast pursues his road with palms and scattered garments strode. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. O Christ, thy triumphs now begin, all captive death and conquered sin. Ride on, ride on in majesty, the angel armies of the sky. Look down with sad and wondering eyes to see the approaching sacrifice. Ride on, ride on in majesty, thy last and fiercest strife is nigh. The Father on his sapphire throne expects his own anointed Son. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. Thou with thy meek head to moment then take, O oh God, thy power and reign. I invite you to take your palms with you. Keep them in a prominent place throughout the year in your home. And then, as you recall, next year, at, at, before Ash Wednesday on, on um, whatever Fat Tuesday is, <laughs> Shrove Tuesday, it, bring your palms with you and we will burn them and use the ashes for Ash Wednesday. So your palms are important to bring next year. So please keep them as an important place to remind you of the love of God and the invitation to be his son and his daughter in Christ. Thank you.